All right, so I've been meaning to make this video for a little while. Um, it's been a, a long time coming because I really haven't been able to speak. As you can see from the, the title, I've had uh, quite, a, quite a journey in the last uh, month and a half or so. I've been really wanting to record videos and I felt like I was kind of at a, a pinnacle of my journey and creativity until this happened, but I guess just starting from the beginning, um, we'll just go in order from what happened. So it was New Year's night, uh, me and my best friend went to some bars and uh, we, we had a, a really, really great night. I had a fantastic night. Um, and I it's odd for me to think about this, a weird twist of fate, but I really felt like, like I said, it was like kind of a pinnacle of me as a person was kind of represented in that night. I, <clears throat> I've been really trying to, you know, overcome a lot of things uh, in my past and become the person I wanted to be. And, um, I felt like that kind of showed that night because I was so extremely happy. I was outgoing. I was talking to everybody uh, with with my best friend, just having you know a fantastic time. And then leaving the bars, it's probably around um, around 2 a.m. or so. We were walking down the street, and I looked across the street and I saw. Uh, some commotion between two individuals. It was a man and a woman, and uh, I stopped for a minute because I, I heard yelling. I wanted to make sure everything was okay, so I um, stopped and listened for a minute. And while I was watching, I saw um, the guy start hitting the girl. And from what it looked like to me, from my perspective, it looked like he was trying to force her into his car and immediately what I assumed was happening was that someone was getting abducted basically so immediately I ran across the street nearly got hit by some cars because a very busy street in downtown Indy and uh, got in a physical altercation with a man very very brief this all happened within 60 seconds at most um, but I'm quite large <laughs> as a person and he quickly backed off and I picked up my glasses off of the ground as did my friend because he, he ran across the street with me to help and uh, I picked up my glasses looked over towards his car because we were right next to his car that was on the side of the road and he had gotten in his car, and also the female did too, because the female ended up being his girlfriend, which I didn't know until that point. And uh, he pulled out a gun and shot me in the face. And um, I guess I'll show the x-ray now that I have. So that is my face, and... Over here you can see the bullet fragments that are still in my jaw. Um, so uh, you can see a missing tooth. Um, so it went in, what happened is it went in my upper lip, bounced off of this first molar that I'm missing, and then it ricocheted into my jaw and shattered my jaw. You can also see on the um, X-ray, those are titanium plates that hold my jaw together and shattered into about four or five pieces. So the first thing um, that I remember right after I got shot was being on the ground, uh, my ears ringing because of the gunshot, um, and choking on my own blood and not knowing where I got shot. You know, it's, it's odd for for people who haven't been through, like, a traumatic thing like that with their body uh, to think that you don't know exactly where you're injured. Um, 
I found out um, a few minutes later, basically. But at that point, I knew I was shot in this area somewhere. I knew that I was still conscious, so it didn't hit my brain in a way that would have killed me instantly or made me go unconscious. So I didn't think I got shot in the head. So what I thought was that I got shot in the neck, actually. And my friend was there as well as some passers-by and actually tried to, you know, um, give me first aid in the neck. Because they didn't know where I was shot either. And then even when the EMTs arrived, they didn't know where I got shot. But I was shot in the jaw. And since I thought it was my neck, um, I thought it was way worse than it was. I don't know how close I actually physically came to death, but at that moment, I thought I was going to die, basically. So laying there choking on my own blood, looking up at the night sky, I <clears throat> basically thought, well, I might bleed out in a few minutes. This might be my last few moments on Earth. So I remember being pretty thankful that I had time left to think and that I was underneath the night sky and that would be where I was before I died and with my best friend. Um, but I basically took those last, what I thought was my last few minutes to think about the beauty of life, you know, one more time, uh, to think about, you know, my family to reflect on the past before it was over. And it was, it was pretty scary. I definitely was really hoping that the ambulance arrived and that, you know, I wasn't gonna bleed out and that I'd make it. All the while, my friend is, you know, attempting to give me first aid. He's on the, the phone with 911 and he's talking to me and I don't think he even has any training in this, but talking to someone who has a gunshot wound is, you know, one of the most important things to keep them conscious so they don't go into shock. So he did the absolute best he could in the circumstance. And um, I, I don't know how long it took for the ambulance to arrive, but it had to have been no more than five minutes. It was It was very fast, so I wasn't, laying there for very long. He got me in the ambulance and took me to the hospital. I'm sorry about all the cuts um, in the video. It's very hard for me to talk. It's getting a lot easier. But basically my, my jaw muscle is still very tight. And the more I use it, the more I talk, it gets tighter and tighter. You can actually hear it affect my voice too. But anyways, I was in the ER overnight until the afternoon the next day, I went to a hospital bed. And also, they gave me pain meds, but all they could really do to stop the bleeding is put gauze in my mouth. It's kind of a hard wound to stop the bleeding on very efficiently. But went up to the hospital bed. Um, the nurse told me that it could be even the next day until I was able to have surgery. But since they knew the story, everyone that treated me knew what happened and why I was there. I think, and I don't know this for sure, that they kind of expedited the process and got me in. He, he came back and told me, you're going into surgery uh, in, in an hour or, or something like that. And I was shocked. I was so happy that I didn't have to sit there with, you know, an open bullet wound in my face. And um, took me to surgery. They put the plates, the titanium plates or whatever they are, in, in my jaw. Um, closed up the wound in my, my lip. They put screws into my jaw and wires to wire it close. Because when you're recovering from a jaw surgery like that, it's very important that your jaw doesn't move. Um, and the next thing I remember is I woke up, it was two days later, it was on the third, I woke up in the early afternoon. Uh, and it's very weird, it's like in the movies when you see someone 
lose time and they don't know like even what day it is because I remember one of the nurses they called him speech is to see if like you have an injury in your mouth whether you're able to to eat to drink water or anything like that and I wasn't even able to sip any water I choked immediately but anyways she said when I woke up like do you remember us we were here yesterday and they had a little whiteboard for me to write on and I was so confused I was like I couldn't say it but I wrote what day is it and they said the third and I said I don't remember that at all and then they basically tested to see how well I could move around and got up and walked down the hallway and well, I more shuffled down the hallway it was like uh, what I can imagine like a hundred and twenty year old person moves like basically um, needless to say I was pretty messed up couldn't speak I was so swollen like you can see now I'm, I'm still pretty swollen noticeably but I was huge like that and I've got some pictures I'll try to splice them in the video But, um, I spent three days, I think it was until Friday evening, so Sunday was when I got shot, uh, well, Monday morning at 2 a.m., uh, spent the night in the ER, next day I had surgery, and then left the ICU on Friday evening, so they got me out there pretty quick, and uh, I could talk for probably a few hours about the ICU, and I think I'll make a follow-up video telling stories about that, but basically the ICU is hell. <laughs> it's hell on earth. But um, one thing I will say about this entire journey, um, every single person there, and this is the Eskenazi Hospital in Indianapolis, every single person there was absolutely the most beautiful, amazing, kind empathetic people on earth especially the nurses um, which I had more contact with than the doctors or anything but they they are a special people they're a special breed of people that they can deal with all these awful things and never once show that emotion never once uh, I know it's not a character but almost like losing character in front of their patients is absolutely incredible it was it was almost kind of spiritual in a way to see these absolutely beautiful people taking care of me at uh, one of the worst physically worst moments of my life and i will admit it was very physically horrible i stayed mentally strong um the whole time i kept thinking about you know some philosophy things uh I was especially into Marcus Aurelius right before uh, that happened, so I kept thinking of quotes of things like the, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts and all these things because was, no matter what was happening, I could change the way I thought about things. And um, I was taking it almost second by second for uh, the days I was in there because it I, I'll, I'll kind of explain a bit if I can. Um, the pain was pretty horrible, obviously. They gave me pain meds, but um, they, they didn't seem to work very well. They would work for maybe an hour, and they'd space them four hours apart. Um, I couldn't sleep. I didn't sleep pretty much the whole time I was there. Um, not only is all the beeping, the tubes, people coming in and out, uh, screaming you hear, keeps you awake, but also, you know, the pain and actually the pain meds uh, made me hallucinate a lot. So as soon as I'd close my eyes, I'd have a basically hallucination nightmare that, I know I say hallucination nightmare, I mean more real, almost, seemingly almost more real than you know, touching anything, touching this camera. It's more real than what's in front of me right now. And it's hard to explain that, but anyone who's had 
legitimate hallucinations knows what I'm talking about. And I had nightmares for probably about a week or so, which we'll go into more. But, um, I didn't sleep all the time that I was there. I also, what most people probably won't understand, but some people watching this will, uh, I don't have Tourette's, but I have um, anxiety-induced tics. And um, one of the things about tics is it, if you if you think about it, they manifest themselves. And if there's something I can't do, I physically can't do, or I shouldn't do, I want to do that thing more than anything on, on earth. So my jaw being wired close, I developed tics with my jaw and mouth and everything, but I couldn't do them in that sort of like anxiety and psychological, it's almost like psychological torture. It's probably one of the worst parts, but I couldn't really explain that to anybody. It's just something I had to kind of suffer through. And the hours take on and on, and it seems like an eternity, but... And I'll, I'll go into that more, maybe in a future video, about, you know, IC and everything, but... I'll just skip to leaving. I went home on that Friday evening. And I stayed with my, my dad back at basically my childhood home. Uh, and by the way, I had lots of friends and family come and visit. They were all very supportive and stayed with me. My friend that was with me when I got shot, he stayed with me in the ER. Him and his cousin stayed with me in the ER. His cousin got in contact with my family. He fell asleep, my, uh, my friend fell asleep on the ER bed with his head on the yard bed, I basically told him, like, go home, man, like, get some sleep, I'll be fine, and, um, anyways, I went home Friday, um, my jaw wired shut, I had to basically figure out what I could consume, and all I could consume was basically just pure liquids, nothing in it at all, like, I couldn't even make shakes with, like, fruit, because the seeds would get stuck in my teeth and everything, so, I basically had to move in between my teeth. So it had to be thin liquids. Uh, so I survived on like insure shakes like a 90 year old lady. Um, and those are horrible. I never want to drink one again. But I drink almost exclusively those and like Powerade and you know, things like that. Um, but uh, I ended up I struggled immensely to get enough calories in. I was not getting enough calories in. I was getting in maybe a thousand a day. It was really, really hard. Because um, I was nauseous a lot. I didn't want to drink those things anymore, especially sweet things. I couldn't have anything savory, pretty much. Uh, I ended up losing about 35 pounds. I went from 215, pretty lean, to 180 like almost like a skeleton it's probably the least body fat i've ever had in my life because i was pretty much i was starving i was unintentionally shredded i was starving um i've gained quite a bit of weight back i'll put in some workout stuff at the end of the video i'm at 205 now i've gained quite a bit of weight back feeling a lot better because i'm about six weeks into the recovery now um, but I'm skipping ahead. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was the nightmares the first few nights. Uh, the first few nights I was back home were pretty horrible. I was able to sleep only pretty much right after I took my pain meds because it would make me really tired and kind of loopy. But um, I'll never forget uh, a few of the nightmares that I had. I was in, my dad let me sleep in his bed in his room because there's not another bed in the house and he slept in like a reclining chair in the living room and um uh, it was more hallucination nightmares basically i didn't know i was asleep it felt like real life everything felt exactly as i am right now as you are watching this video that real and i had a recurring one where 
basically an invisible like demon would come out of like dark closet and grab my foot and drag me across the room into the closet and in the closet was like this dark almost like vortex like vortex into hell but as soon as my foot hit the, the wall the vortex disappeared there's no demon I crawl back into bed in my dream this happened twice and I even hallucinated going in and like sleeping next to my dad and everything, which never happened because I was still asleep. The last one, the demon picked me up by my ankle and held me like in the air. Um, and then I dropped and then that was the last nightmare I had. Also to mention, there was definitely a lot of nightmares involving guns and gunshots and stuff like that. Um, and then like a quick timeline of everything that happened after that without going into too much detail and I might in the future but this video would be too long but I went home to my place where I'm at now probably a week or two after I think two weeks after uh, I left ICU and I still have my jaw wired shut I was here for um, you know the rest of the time uh, as I still am, obviously. Uh, I got my jaw unwired. Uh, I, I went in thinking I was just getting the stitches out of my face. But then they're like, yeah, we're gonna unwire your jaw. And I was actually ecstatic because of that. But, um, I removed the wires. And I don't know why I thought I was gonna be, eat, be able to eat like normal in like a week. But, um, I was only able to open my mouth like half an inch at most. I had to force in my finger to kind of stretch the jaw um so i was only able to eat i was able to eat more which i was very happy with but i was able to eat like yogurt and mashed potatoes and things which i would not have been able to eat before so i was very happy about that um and then about two weeks later i uh um started going to the gym again i was extremely weak and i'm still pretty weak. One of the things about like your muscles being tight in here it affects other things. So it affects my trap a lot which I'm still having issues with and my upper back. So things like shoulder pressing and lateral raises are very hard for me to do. It's been a bit of a journey and I'm doing a lot better now. Um, Coming back to my former strength, gained quite a bit of weight back. I'm trying not to eat too much and get fat, but I kind of use the excuse of recovering to to be able to eat a little bit more. I'm eating normal food now. Right now, in the back, um, I just bought an Instant Pot today, and I'm making white chicken chili. So. A little bit more before I eat, I'll take my fingers and kind of force it open a bit so I can open my mouth more. Um, but I, I have trouble chewing things that are too big because I can't really use my molars because the fulcrum of the jaw back here is still too tight. So the food can't really get back in between the teeth and between the molars. So I kind of eat with like my front teeth more but it's getting getting a lot better my voice is a lot better this is the best it's been for sure because after i got unwired it was extremely hard to talk and i only be able to talk for a few minutes before i was basically tapped out and this is this video is probably the most i've ever talked at once and i've had to take a lot of breaks in order to kind of massage my jaw and everything but i'm doing a lot better and I guess my conclusion thoughts for this video, I'll probably get into more details in the future, uh, is kind of how it changed me. Um, I'm really extremely lucky to be alive, as you can probably judge for yourself. Um, pe many people get shot in the face and either survive or come out looking almost normal, uh, except for... I've got a big scar, you can see it, 
on my neck from the surgery. And then um, I've also got a lot of nerve damage, so basically my skin here I can't really feel all the way up to my earlobe. My gums basically split down the middle of my lower teeth all the way to the right. I have no feeling at all in my, my gums or my teeth or jaw or anything, which makes it very weird when I'm eating because I can't even tell there's food on that side, so I mostly eat with the left. And that will probably um, never, uh, it'll never go away because the, the nerve that runs through the jaw is severed, and that's not coming back. Um, that was another thing I was going to say. Um, oh, this is a big one. Yeah, um, as you saw, the bullet's still on my jaw. They were able to remove some fragments when they did the surgery, but he told me that uh, if he cut into the muscle and everything there, that he could have caused more nerve damage. I already have a lot of trouble moving my lips now because of the nerve damage, so... I don't have any pain, so the bullet being in there for now is okay, unless in the future it causes issues. But going back to how it's mentally changed me, I was just so happy, you know, to still be here. It almost kind of feels like a bonus, <laughs> bonus life. There's a Marcus Aurelius quote that um, uh, I'll have to remember by heart, but basically, Think about yourself as if you were dead, and now appreciate the rest of your life from this moment on. And it's been hard, honestly, to keep that in mind and um, remind myself to remember that feeling. Because as you go through your mundane job, like or uh, life, like I'm at work now again, at the gym, everything's kind of back to normal, except for socially, because I can't talk very well. But um. It's kind of hard to remember that, but I try to keep that in mind that, you know, every moment is a gift. And I thought that before this happened, but this kind of just reinforced it. Um, I definitely learned how much the human body and mind can withstand suffering-wise and still come, come out okay on the other side because I'm not like psychologically damaged or anything really only changed me for the good or the positive for the better so I'm very grateful for that I'm very grateful for all my friends and family um, it really made me appreciate everyone a lot everyone that visited me and constantly messaged me and kept up with me um, I've got a lot of people who love me and you know, I want to keep spreading that love myself with this time that I've have left after all that happened. Um, it put a lot of things into perspective. A lot of, you know, the more mundane, corporeal issues that we suffer from. Um, it made me more spiritual, and I was already on a spiritual journey beforehand. So, you know, thinking back about how I felt like I was kind of at the pinnacle of my spiritual journey and I think life just basically told me it's like no you don't know yet we're gonna show you and it, it definitely showed me and um, I don't know I'll have to go into this a lot more this is all off the cuff I have no script or anything like that just trying to explain my absence and I want to start making videos and move forward um, one thing that helped me all throughout this, um, you know, other than my family and everything, was my own mind. Because um, my journey up until this point was involved a lot of suffering. Um, but I was able to overcome that with philosophy. And I know that sounds um, kind of ridiculous, probably. But that was kind of the point of this channel, was to explain those things. So overcoming suffering and hardship with your own mind and transcending that um, on your spiritual journey all the suffering of life because we all suffer it's inevitable it's inescapable it's a fact of life but we can transcend that um, and the way to do that is spiritually um, 
which with the help of philosophy you can begin on your journey and that's what I want to talk about through my videos and um, there's going to be a lot of different topics, there's going to be a lot of different videos um, and I also of course want to do the fitness stuff too so I think, um, I think I'll end this video and I'll be able to talk about this more in the future maybe step by step because one of the most interesting things about this journey has been it's um it's been a wide variety of suffering uh it was all in like stages so i'd move from one stage like the icu to home recovering with my jaw wired shut to my jaw unwired still recovering dealing with being unable to socialize and things like that so it's been a wide variety which i'll i should get into that in some videos and explain my philosophy of it and how I dealt with it um, as well as show my fitness journey because I'm on obviously like a call it a revenge arc afterwards um, I'll be on my super villain arc no, I'm just kidding it definitely made me it humbled me quite a bit um, probably made me into a nicer better person for sure but I'll show some clips and then um, I'll take it from there and make some more videos. Thank you for watching this. Okay, I just wanted to um, show like a little quick update of uh, what I'm looking like. Um, doing shoulder press right now. I kind of want to record this because this is something I was kind of struggling with a bit. On the right side of my shoulder stability. Um, you can kind of see in the, in the video a little bit that I'm struggling with 50 pounds which you now is pretty pretty humbling after doing a lot heavier weight for shoulder press but you know that's something that's going to happen when you've got an injury as you can see i haven't really lost too much weight um but this is uh, you got to keep a note that this is a couple weeks after um i i first started coming back to the gym and definitely after i had my jaw unwired so you can see I've gained quite a bit of weight back. Still at this point, not feeling as strong as I would have in the past, but, you know, not looking too bad. And, you know, we'll just see a little bit of a pose down, and I'll be back with more fitness stuff in the future, but this video is getting pretty long, so I'll leave it there.